Hi, I'm Brendan Burns, an engineer on the Google Kubernetes team, and I'm here today to show you how, that, how you can get started with Kubernetes on a single machine in only a few minutes. So let's go over to the GitHub repository and take a look at the instructions for running Kubernetes locally on a single machine using Docker. This diagram shows you uh, the final product that we're going to produce. It's going to be a single machine that's both a master and the worker that's going to run our work. It consists of an etcd for storage, some Kubernetes components, and of course the containers that you run. So let's get started. The very first thing we're going to do is run etcd. etcd is a product of CoreOS that's going to provide our persistent store for all of the objects that we create. So here we go. I'm on a Compute Engine VM. I'm going to run this Docker container. You'll see it hasn't had the image already, so it's going to pull it down. While we wait for that, let's go back over to the GitHub repository and take a look at the second step. Well, the second step is to actually run the master components themselves. They are going to connect to etcd and use etcd for storage. Let's go back to that VM, and etcd is now up and running. Let's launch those master components. This is the pieces that provide all of the Kubernetes infrastructure for managing containers, as well as the API server that you're going to be talking to. So that last pulling, let's go over and take a look at the third step. And the third step is to run the service proxy. Uh, and the service proxy is actually basically a combination of load balancing and DNS service discovery that provides Kubernetes services, which are collections of containers that implement the same piece of functionality, like a web server or a piece of middleware. So our master uh, components are up and running. Let's launch that service proxy. Okay, and it's using the same image, so it doesn't have to pull it uh, this time around. So let's take a look at what we have actually running now. So what you'll see is there's actually a number of containers, more than the three that we ran. There's the etcd that we created. And what has happened here is we've actually started a kubelet. You can see that right here. And the kubelet is actually what is responsible for managing all of the containers inside of Kubernetes. And it itself has spawned a variety of other containers, including the API server and the scheduler that you can see here. And then, of course, here's the proxy that we launched. Now, the great thing about running things under the kubelet is that it's actually managing for, responsible for managing health checking and that sort of thing. And so it will keep these containers up and running if they happen to die. Um, so let's step back now that we have our Kubernetes cluster up and running. Let's step back and actually do something with it. So we're going to take the, uh, get the kube control binary, which is the command line tool for interfacing with Kubernetes. We're going to download that. And then we're going to uh, run that command. Now you may have to uh, make it readable, so we can say chmod a plus x. All right, uh, q control git nodes. It's going to show us the status of our cluster. You can see we have a single worker, its local host, and its status is ready. So let's actually create a container. The so q control run container. Uh, give it a name, engine x, and the image that we want to run is just the vanilla engine x image. All right, so now what has happened here is we've actually gone out, we've asked Kubernetes to run a container for us, and indeed if we say cube, cube control get pods, you can see now here there's that engine x, and it's up and running, and it has this IP address here. So we can say curl that IP, oops, I can copy and paste, we can say curl and that IP address and there's our nginx welcome page. Now one of the great things about Kubernetes actually is it manages not just individual pods but actually replication and so now we can actually say cube control resize nginx replicas equals three. Let's see what happened. Oops. Something wrong. Ah yes I need to say replication control nginx. It's been resized. Now if I say cube control get pods what you'll see now here is actually have three replicas of Nginx up and running all in front of another. Now, of course, once you replicate something, you actually want to have a single point of contact for it, and that's where a Kubernetes service comes into play. And so now I can actually say kube control expose Nginx chef port equals 80. And now what we've done here is we've created a load balancer that is now responsible for managing access to all three of those pods that we have up and running. I can take that IP address, and there we have the Nginx. And if I kill any of those containers, if any of those containers happens to fail, the load balancer there is going to be responsible for failing over to the next available uh, pod that's up and running. 
So I hope that's given you a perspective about how to get started with Kubernetes, and I hope you can see that it's a simple system to get started with, and it can lead you to really powerful management of your applications. Thanks.